So, as you heard me say, this is the brew house. Now, some of you may be thinking, well, wait a second, the whole building's a brew house. It's where you make beer, right? That's not true. A brew house only has three things in it. It has a mash tub, it has a brew kettle that is most surrounded by bricks back there, and it has a hot liquor tank. Those three things are all you need to have a brew house. And this is what you would have in your garage or your basement or wherever when you're home brewing. Now, that barley traveled through that pipe, as I said, and then we empty it into our mash tub. In the mash tub, we mix it with hot liquor. Now, this isn't Zambuca or Jägermeister. Okay? It's not that type of hot liquor. Hot liquor is a brewing term. That just means hot water. All right? It's just hot water. So hot water goes into the mash tub with the barley. The barley steeps for a few hours. And as it's steeping, it's converting all of its starch into sugar. So what you get out of the mash tub is called wort, W-O-R-T. Not warts, W-A-R-T. Nobody wants to drink warts. <laughs> so wort is what you get. It's just sugar water. It's not alcoholic, it's not beer. It's just sugar water, that's it. So we take that wort, we move it out of the mash tub, and we put it into the brew kettle. What's left behind is the mash. It looks like oatmeal. It's like all the spent grain. And here at the PVC, we like to get rid of that stuff. We'll scrape it all out and we'll haul up the rocks bar. Was anybody here from Philly? Was anybody here admit they're from Philly? <laughs> See? He, he raised his hand. He's like, yeah, I guess I'm from Philly. <laughs> but we haul it all up the rocks bar. That's where everybody dumps their garbage, right? If you're not from Philly, you probably don't get it. <laughs> they get it. Now, up in Roxborough, there's an agricultural school, believe it or not. There's a place in Philadelphia where we train people to like work with cattle and grow things. You know, that stuff that you eat that comes out of the ground? Yeah. Up in Roxborough, they have that. And we take all of our grain up to them and they feed their cows and their goats and everything. So we don't waste it. We recycle it. Right? And that makes us good people. Actually, better. Anyway. That's fine. <laughs> so... All that stuff goes up to Roxborough, feeds those cattle. What's left behind is that wort that's now in the brew kettle. We're going to start boiling it. But here is where we're really going to start messing with the flavor. What is that one ingredient you always hear about going into? Huh. The dude is so on top of this. There is no prize at the end of this. All right. Yes, hops. Hops. Hops is a plant. We're going to pass this around. This is pelletized hops. Smell that. <laughs> all right, don't eat it, all right? Hops is a plant that produces a very bitter oil. And the idea is for that bitterness to balance out with the sweetness of that sugar oil, okay? Of course, you can throw that out of whack and really hop some stuff up. But really, you're trying to achieve some kind of a balance between the two. Also, at the brew kettle, you can really start adding anything you want. Has anybody here tried our Walt Whit yet? Yes. Yes, Walt Whit is a good example if you haven't tried it yet, it has grapefruit peel in it, it has orange peel, it has chamomile, and it has coriander. Four very pronounced flavors, right? They all go in the brew kettle. You can add herbs or spices, fruits or vegetables. You can put, say, a burnt hickory into it, right? Get the woody flavor, smoky flavor out of it. You can put coffee into it, like we do with our Joe Porter. You can put chocolate into it. And dig this, best of all, you can even put bacon into it. Nobody's salivating. Bacon and beer in one bottle. Would you ever need anything ever again? <laughs> Except for a couch. Right? So anything can happen at the brew kettle. Anything. This is going to go on for about two hours. It's boiling. Then we're ready for the yeast. However, you can't throw yeast into a vat of boiling liquid because you would kill your yeast. So we got to break the temperature of it down. Uh, it's a mix. Some cascades, some discoloring. So, to cool this down, we need to put it through a process. It's right around the corner here, very simple. We have what's called a heat exchanger. It's this exciting machine right here. All right, now a heat exchanger, you notice there's hoses running in and out of it. The hot wort will go through one side of this apparatus, while the cold water will go through another. Without touching each other, they will swap temperatures. They will exchange their temperature. So the wort comes down to about 65, where the yeast can thrive in. Obviously, the cold water gets hot, and then that will go into our hot liquor tank. So we'll get two uses out of all of our water here. Okay? Two uses out of our water, so we'll recycle that again. Now, after that has cooled down, the wort, we head down here. It's 
So if you look at the tank, F you, right? <laughs> what do you mean? What's the matter? What's that? <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> it's just fermentation here. What's the matter with you people? It's just for what? You think because I'm from Philly, I'm nasty? <laughs> it's fermentation here, right? That's what all these are. And you notice it says 60 BBL on the side. That means each one of these holds 60 barrels of beer. For the commoner, that means 120 half kegs. That's the stuff dreams are made of, right? Yes. So, we've moved our wort down to here. We're ready to add yeast to it. Now, yeast is a single cell living organism. And believe it or not, as I'm speaking to you, it's floating around you. It's on the walls, it's in your clothes, it's everywhere. Yeast exists everywhere. However, in brewing, you don't just use any old ordinary yeast. You're not gonna scrape it off the sidewalk outside and throw it in your ferment, right? Unless you want the flavor of Kensington in your beer. <laughs> I suggest you go lick the sidewalk to see what that tastes like, okay? So, we have to use special types of yeast that are used for brewing. And again, there's hundreds of varieties to choose from, and believe it or not, yeast has a flavor. So the yeast you choose will change the flavor of your beer. So this is three different times we've changed the flavor already, right? So, the brewmaster, it's his job to use that yeast, to monitor that yeast, to make sure it's happy and healthy and doing its job. The brewmaster's kind of like Dr. Frankenstein. He can make it go to sleep, he can bring it back to life, he controls the whole duration of this process, okay, which could be 14 to 21 days, depending on the style of beer you're making. But, he's really just monitoring it because it's doing a job, and what is the job of yeast? What's it doing inside one of these guys? It's fermenting, yes. It's making alcohol out of what? Sugar. sugar. Out of the sugar, right? It's much a thing like Pac-Man, just eating all those little sugar crystals and, and just pooping out all that good old alcohol, right? So finally, at this point of the process, we can say we have that beautiful product that we love to consume known as? Beer. beer. That's it? I got like three people that are excited about this. <laughs> Now, folks, do you realize most of you wouldn't even be alive if it weren't for beer? <laughs> I mean, if your parents are like mine, that is, you know what I mean? You wouldn't even be here. So you should be excited about this. So now we have... Beer! beer. Thank you. <laughs> All right, love <laughs> so, <laughs> so now, we're not yet ready to consume it. We still have a few things we need to do before we're ready to start consuming this product. So we're going to go downstairs, we're going to see where that happens, all right? So follow me, watch your step, and hang on to the rails, you head down. Pretty cool. All right.